So before we get into answering the question of whether it's possible to build muscle in a caloric deficit or lose body fat in a caloric surplus, first I wanna just pose the question to you guys. Now, so let's just imagine a scenario where you have a pretty well-trained lifter who's never done any direct forearm training. Now, he usually maintains his weight on around 2,500 calories, but he's currently running a 12 week cut where he'll be dieting on 2,000 calories, so about a 20% caloric deficit. And he'll obviously be losing body mass over the next 12 weeks. So the question I'm posing to you guys is, if he starts doing direct forearm training, so let's say 20 sets per week, will he gain significant muscle in his forearms? Now keep in mind, he will be in a net caloric deficit the entire time. And I'll actually just put this question up here in the cards uh, so I can have an idea of what you guys think. So I think that the answer is yes, unless he's some kind of non-responder to training or is just really under eating protein. I think there's no good reason to think that he won't add muscular size to his forearms while losing weight overall. And this is something I feel like a lot of people in our community get wrong. It's really common for me to hear people say that you just can't build muscle unless you're in a caloric surplus. But as we'll see, this just really isn't true. And like most things is totally context dependent. So I think the first thing we need to consider here is the first law of thermodynamics, which in this context says that if you're in a caloric surplus, then by definition, you'll be storing net energy. And if you're in a caloric deficit, you'll be losing net energy with net being the key word there. Uh, but I think the confusion comes when people just assume that an anabolic process like building muscle couldn't happen concurrently with a catabolic process like losing fat which it can. There are a few ways that we could explain why this is the case. The first is the common sense approach. So because fat tissue and muscle tissue are separate systems, it's perfectly possible to lose a bunch of fat due to the caloric deficit while still building muscle from the progressive training stimulus and sufficient protein. It would be like if you had two different bank accounts, you could withdraw a thousand bucks from one account while depositing 50 bucks into the other account and you still would have withdrawn a net amount of 950 bucks despite monetary gain in one of the accounts. Now another way to think about this is by using the actual math. So one kilogram or about 2.2 pounds of muscle contains 1800 calories while one kilogram of fat has 9,400 calories. Because muscle is mostly made up of water, it has much less stored energy than fat does. So let's just imagine someone gained two kilograms, so about 4.4 pounds of muscle, across a six month training program while losing one kilogram of fat something totally reasonable for someone in their first couple years of intelligent training. Now, if we do out the math here, so they gained two kilograms of muscle, which equals a gain of 3,600 calories, and then they lost one kilogram of fat, which equals a loss of 9,400 calories. So even though they would have gained one kilogram of total body weight, there must have been a total net energy deficit of 5,800 calories across those six months. Now, keep in mind that this is net total deficit, so because there's about 180 days and six months, this would only come out to about a 32 calorie deficit per day. And remember that this is despite the fact that over four pounds of muscle was gained. So the third way we can prove this is possible is by looking at actual training research results. So just picking one 2016 study out of Stu Phillips lab, you can see that on average subjects lost about five kilograms of fat mass while gaining about a kilogram of lean mass. And this was despite being in a caloric deficit and due to the fact that they were on a progressive resistance training program and eating a high protein diet. Now, not everyone can expect amazing body recomposition like this. And as I outlined in my Science Explained video last year on this, uh, the likelihood of any given individual actually building muscle in a caloric deficit depends on several factors. Uh, so first, the less training experience you have, the easier it'll be to build muscle in a deficit. Now, the higher your starting body fat percentage, the easier it'll be because the stored fat can serve as a massive energy source throughout the deficit. The smaller the deficit, the easier it will be. In general, I recommend keeping the deficit below 20% of maintenance. And the higher your protein intake, the easier it'll be up to a point, which is is probably somewhere around one gram per pound of body weight. You'll just wanna keep those four factors in mind if you wanna make it a reality for you. Uh, but I actually found the opposite question uh, more interesting. So is it possible to eat in a caloric surplus and still lose body fat? So let's just look at the math here again. So if you were to gain six kilograms of muscle, which is definitely possible over a year as a beginner or an early intermediate, while at the same time losing a kilogram of fat, then by definition, you would have had to have been in a net surplus of 1400 calories while losing body fat. Now it's important to note that again, that's total cumulative caloric surplus 
So if the transformation happened over a year or 365 days, that it actually only be about a four calorie surplus per day which is obviously not practical at all. But I think what this ultimately proves is that it is possible to lose fat while in a caloric surplus if you build a lot of muscle very quickly because of the differences in energy densities between fat and muscle. At risk of just confusing things more, I wanted to use these two examples to prove the broader point that body recomposition certainly is very possible and actually expected under certain circumstances. And energy balance and body weight changes aren't always inextricably linked because of differences in the energy density of different body tissues. I would say people in their first one to two years of training can expect to build muscle and lose fat at the same time, as long as their training program is set up properly, they're eating sufficient protein, and the caloric deficit isn't too large. In practice, I'd recommend about a 15 to 20% deficit, and in general, you just wanna focus on compound movements in the six to 15 rep range with progressive strength increases from week to week or month to month. Now, for people beyond their first couple years of training, uh, despite the fact that some data does suggest that body recomposition is still possible in more experienced trainees, I still generally recommend discrete cutting and bulking cycles because after a certain training age, uh, trying to build muscle while in a caloric deficit uh, will most likely result in either very quickly diminishing returns, meaning slower gains, or as you get even more advanced, uh, you could just be totally spinning your wheels and not really getting much of anywhere with either goal. Before we leave, I'm just gonna pose the first scenario again. So we've got the same guy in a same 20% caloric deficit, uh, but this time he has been training his forearms with 20 sets per week for the last five years leading into his cut. Now throughout his cut, will he continue to build muscle in his forearms or will he at best maintain that muscle? And I'll just put that one up there in the cards as well. And I'm just gonna leave it at that and we can discuss that one in the comments if you'd like.